What is going on guys, Zizu here and welcome to another scary ripped Saturday. Yes, it is that time where we sit and we break bread and read some scary stories on Reddit. Today's theme is scariest unexplained experiences. I myself have not had any of these experiences, but I have picked few stories for you guys today which I thought were pretty creepy so let's get right to the stories I was stationed in Seoul South Korea several years ago I was taking a shower in my room and when I got out the word leave was written in small letters in the fog on the bathroom mirror I didn't have a roommate because NCOs got their own private rooms a little freaked out, I decided to do exactly that, leave. I went off post for some Korean barbecue and wandered, and wandered the city a bit. I came back a couple hours later to find the barracks were evacuated and half burned down to the ground. The fire was pinpointed to faulty electrical wiring that caught some ins insulation on fire inside the walls. Something new was going to happen and to this day, whatever that something was, it didn't want me in the middle of it. I gladly thank whoever or whatever it is if they gave me a chance. But it's been years and I still have no idea. Yeah. 2008. I was 18 and my brother, Chris, was 16. I also had a brother, James, who was 5 at the time. We had just moved into an older house that was used to be three apartments. We just about finished unpacking and we designated rooms. James' room was directly above the living room with the staircase. James went up to discover his room and Chris and I took a short walk around the neighborhood. We got back and we were just sitting in the living room just talking. My mom said she's going to get pizza for dinner and leaves. She took a fairly long time which is normal for her. I think she really enjoys that small break she gets when she can leave the house without James and I, and I never object to babysitting. Besides, James is pretty occupied with his new room. Chris and I are just talking in the living room. James is super excited about his new bedroom. We hear him running and stomping around upstairs, opening and closing doors. Sometimes he slams the door pretty hard, but whatever, he's a kid. I assumed he fell asleep since the noise stopped eventually. I hear my mom's car pull up. I get up to meet her in the kitchen. My mom comes in carrying soda. James follows directly behind her carrying the food yelling, Pizza time! <laughs> Pizza time. She took him with her to get dinner. Confirmed by my mom, Chris and I just look at each other talking, taking too long to comprehend what was happening. I lived in that house for four years and that was the only time something really freaked me out. The houses are very, uh, spiritual places and it creeps me out because there's a lot of the ghosts and spirits rummaging around I myself have experienced <coughs> I myself haven't experienced a ghost encounter but who knows I was driving down a dark back road with zero light aside from my headlights when I was 16 I was with my best friend and we were joking and being teenagers when he says to me to look out for this box that was in the road. What I saw was a box slowly inching towards the road, across the road. Now, this was at night with no wind in the PNW. There was clearly something in the box. I approached slowly, thinking maybe a raccoon or a cat was stuck under the box and needed help. As I'm pulling alongside it, my friend starts getting a little freaked out. I look at him, car is stopped now, and I'm like, chill dude, we can free him. And he starts begging me to drive. I look over, and I see that it's not a box at all. It's a piece of cardboard, stood up on end, just f inching towards our car slowly. We were right next to it, so there's no str there was no strings pulling it, and there was no wind, so it couldn't have been that. It took a second to register that what I was seeing wasn't normal, and once it did, I drove so fast out of there. 
to this day, I have no effing clue what the F that was. There's a lot of things in this world that we don't know about. And a piece of cardboard might be the scariest thing you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> Me and some of my friends went to explore an abandoned mall. And in the distance, we could faintly hear the sound of children laughing and playing. It was spooky as hell, like a corny horror movie. Found the source of the sound, it was coming from a speaker in the kids' playground in the mall. Apparently it had been left on, probably for years, but that was barely any less spooky. The fact that they ran a loop of the sounds of children playing, and that it was still running, that's still creepy. I don't know why you would have a speaker of sounds of kids playing. I mean, I, maybe someone could educate me on that. And maybe it's something to make kids feel safer. I don't know. There was this abandoned school turned World War I military hospital near my house that my friend and I liked to break into. One day we were rooting around the third floor and we found an empty envelope on the floor of the closet. It was old and the address was written in script. It had only it only had a name on it. That name was the exact name as my friend, whose name is rather uncommon. We booked it out of there real fast. Edit, my friend is a lady, and like many families, they do not do legacy names for ladies. There was no one else in her family by her name. Half of her family grew up in another state, the other half in another country. The envelope was empty, checked, and we couldn't find a letter to go with it. They were right by getting out of there. I'm crazy. I think I'm stamping in that house. My freshman year of college, I was living on the fourth floor of my dorms. It was winter time and there was snow on the ground. It was probably around 3 or 4 in the morning, and my roommate and I had both randomly woken up by, but we weren't talking, as we both thought the other was asleep. Then we heard very clear, loud knocking on our, floor, on our window. Four loud knocks that you could just tell was on glass. We both said, did you hear that? And we were kind of spooked. 15 minutes went by and nothing happened. I started to fall back asleep. And there it was again, four loud knocks. At this point, I was shaking because in my mind, someone had climbed up to our window and was trying to scare the shit out of us. So I got up and pulled our blinds back to look for someone. No one was there. No footprints on the snow and the ground. Nothing. So I got back in bed. Another five minutes later or so, we heard knocking again, but it was coming from what it sounded like the neighbor's window. Sure enough, we heard our neighbors say, dude, what the F, and shuffle around a little. Then, like two minutes later, it sounded like every single window on our floor was being knocked on for about seven seconds straight. Just absolutely insane. People started screaming, and we could hear people opening their doors and running across the hall into their friend's room because they were terrified. It kept happening for probably two more hours, but only at specific windows, like every 15 to 30 minutes. Every time I was about to fall asleep, it happened again. I even texted my boyfriend who lived on the first floor to ask him if he also heard this, which he didn't. That was a very long night. No one ever found out what that was, as far as we know. As far as I know. Yeah, them dorms, man. I live in a dorm. I've been living in a dorm for the past two years, and it's crazy. Sometimes some creepy stuff we have. Sometimes. Sometimes. I've already told y'all about that. If you want to watch my uh, creepy paranormal experiences video, I'll put that in the uh, the little eye up here in the corner. Or over there. Just whichever corner it is. When I was nine, I woke up in the middle of the night positive that my aunt Hope had died. The feeling was so real that it scared the daylights out of me and I ran to my parents' room crying. I told them what happened and they kept saying, it's just a bad dream, everything's okay, Aunt Hope is fine, but I couldn't calm down. After, 15 to tw uh, after 10 to 15 minutes of this, the phone rang, my dad got up and went to answer it. It was my uncle calling to tell us Hope had just died. It was like 2am, I took my clothes off and went to sleep. A minute later something hit me at my head, it was one of my socks. When I take them off, I throw them in the corner of my room, so someone threw it back at me. But there was no one in my room, and was 100% alone. It may not sound so scary, 
but it was for me. No, there was no fans in my rooms. And the road rules of civil war a bit. Just imagine getting hit by your sock in the middle of the night. <laughs> that would a fan have that much power to throw your sock from the corner of the room just just get hit by a random sock. I get insomnia. It was one of those nights and I was sitting out on my back porch about 4 a.m. smoking a cigarette. It was one of those eerie nights where there was absolutely no breeze and it's just completely quiet out. We have woods behind our house and as I was sitting there I see this person making his way through the canopy of the trees like jumping from tree to tree 30 or 40 feet up in the air. I was absolutely stunned and just sat there dumbly too afraid and confused to even get up and run inside the house. This person or thing, whatever it was, stops directly behind my house and looks at me. At this point, it was about 50 feet, 50 feet away and maybe 40 feet up in the air. It pauses for about 5 seconds staring in my direction. I'm absolutely certain that it wasn't an animal. Its body was human shaped and it definitely wasn't a raccoon, bear, or any of the other things people have suggested. It might have been. But the way it was moving through the trees definitely was not human. No human. I don't care how android they were, could move like it was too dark to make out much of detailed face, clothing, or anything like that. After about five seconds of looking at me, it turns away and takes off the same way it had been going before. Just leaping from the tree to tree at a fast pace. Within a few seconds, it was out of sight. Just imagine seeing some crazy humanoid looking thing jumping from tree to tree. Now I was, now this story procured my interest so much that I clicked on a subreddit about humanoid creatures. Now I know you guys didn't come for that, but I needed to see this and I needed, this is unexplained, so the story comes from my mom and two younger brothers right about, right about a year ago. And this was five hours ago. This is recent. I live in a village within a huge forest that has pockets here and there of other villages. Meaning if you went to another village, you want to go to another village, then you have to go through the forest. Poland is like one third forest, so it's quite common. Just trying to give you a picture of the environment. Basically, my mom told me that she was driving with my two brothers at around midnight to our neighbor village. While driving through the forest, she and my siblings saw something in the middle of the road. She proceeded to slow down to a near stop and put the big lights on. They told me that they were in a state of freezing shock when they saw it. She said that even the light, even with the light, she couldn't really see details as it was kind of hazy. They described it being extremely tall, twice the size of my dad, who is uh, 1.9 meters. I don't know how tall that is. So I'll have to look it up and very skinny with arms and legs being disproportionately long. They said it had some sort of dark brown or black clothes on with no shoes but with big feet. No shining eyes like it would have been from an animal. Dark brown skin or hair. They said that it took two steps from the middle of the road and it vanished into the forest. It's a shitty paved road with a width of about two cars and has and it has a two to three meter drop and about a two to uh, and a about two meter ditch on both sides and less than a meter thick of forest starts. After disappearing, my mom my mom asked people in the village if they saw something in the forest, but they said they haven't. A few days later it passed and the news had traveled to other villages that my mom saw something and it was crazy. But she got a call from a horse breeder from a neighbor village. From a neighbor village, he lives at the tree line of the forest, and he said that when he needs to go to another village on horseback, the horses should stop at the forest entrance and refuse to enter. My mom isn't a believer type, isn't the believer type of this kind of shit. But after what she saw, she opened her mind. Not long before the sighting, people started to cut pieces of the forest. It could be a. Lexi, a, a Lexi, a Slavic f a forest protector being. It is said it can take any form and change size and height, but I have no idea. If you have any, if you know anything, please comment. Now, I'm gonna, I'm interested to see what 
0.9 meter. 6.2. So, said it was twice the size. So it was 12 feet tall. Imagine, see, that's like, that's like, that's like flipping siren head. How tall is siren head? 40 feet. Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Woo, okay. All right. Well, probably like Sasquatch. I would say like, how tall is Bigfoot? Isn't he like six? What is he like? We can be anywhere from six, six to ten feet tall. So a really tall looking thing with long arms and long legs that aren't proportionate. Yeah, that's it's not my cup of tea right there. My grandfather used to take me camping and camping and hunting with him in Arkansas. In the forest just outside of the Wachita Natural National Forest. I distinctly remember one night laying down after we let the campfire go around. We were just talking back and forth and all of a sudden he made that hint noise that meant shut your mouth now. Usually it meant he'd spotted game. I don't know what hint is. Um, but okay. So I immediately clammed up and started listening and straining to see what had gotten his attention. A few minutes later, I see a black man shaped figure walking to, uh, through the tree tops. The tree limbs didn't bend or even move, neither did the leaves, but this black man shaped figure, it didn't even really walk, it sauntered, and it almost skipped from tree to tree, like it had no weight. I remember being scared and whispering, Grandpa, what is and he very quietly said, don't you dare call to it, shush. So I shut up and watched it, while it almost frolicked back and forth through the treetops. There is no way those trees and limbs could have supported the weight of something that tall without bending or even cracking or creaking. I asked my grandfather about it the next day, and he said, I've been hunting and sleeping these hills for most of my life, and I've seen that dang thing since I was a kid. Most people around here have never heard of no one ever talking to it, but I've known plenty who came out here and never got home. I have no clue what that thing was, and you're the first person I've ever heard who actually saw it too. So this is a common reoccurrence of these talking of the thing that can walk above the trees, which is... Uh, not of the humanoid tall little thing, but this person that was talking about how he saw this thing jumping up and, you know, was jumping from tree to tree. One night, I woke up to seeing my ex crouched in the closet. The closet was open and in few, full view of my bed. Of course, I asked him what the hell he was doing in the closet. He just kept smiling like crazy and talking really sweetly to me saying it was fine and I should come in too. I kept telling him no, he needed to just come back to bed. And then after a few minutes, my ex walked into the bedroom from, into the, bedroom from the bathroom, asking who I was talking to. My, my ex closet ex disappeared, and I never saw him again. But a lot of other weird crap happened in that house. Wow. So her, so her boyfriend, wasn't in the closet, it was some weird illusion or ghost. Alright, two more stories. Wow. I was working at Starbucks in a very in a busy metro area. It was being renovated, but we have a really tiny, inadequate crappy setup from with which to sling drinks around temporarily. There was a bunch of uh partisans which made it creepy, so everyone felt like it was haunting them. Partitions. Partitions? There was a bunch of partitions which made it creepy, so everyone felt like it was haunting them. The phone rang, and one of the supervisors answered and said that a woman said she was locked in the bathroom and couldn't get out. That actually has happened in the store before, so I went and checked, and both bathrooms were empty. When we tried Star 69, the phone number, we kept getting a disconnected air. I honestly thought the supervisor was full of crap because I generally hated him. Then a few minutes later the phone rang again and I answered it. There was a woman on the phone who sounded really distressed. She asked for Alejandra. 
who was another supervisor who left maybe 20 minutes earlier. I asked who she was and she screamed, her mother. And I apologized and said she clocked out and wouldn't be back in. And she screamed, she's my daughter, I want to talk to her. She was clearly very distressed and crying. I tend to mind my own business. Family drama is family drama and I wouldn't want someone to make a big deal out about, about it. So I just texted at Al when I got back off when I got off of work and said her mom called and sounded very upset. She immediately called me and told me her mom had been dead for years and wanted to know who called the store. She was really pissed that someone would do that, but I was creeped out. Especially because someone had died in one of the bathrooms a few years earlier, was doing drugs and overdosed in the, in the Starbucks bathroom. Either a very good actress who had personal information in the store was calling, or for 20 minutes our Starbucks landline was open for the dead to connect to the living. They get creeped out talking about it. But that's going to wrap it up for this episode of Scary Reddit Saturdays. If you guys enjoyed, please leave a like. If you are uh, new, consider subscribing. And um, there's a bunch of videos if you guys are interested in this more personalized Reddit stories. Um, all the other Reddit videos on this uh, on YouTube really have just an automated voice. So I figured an actual person would be better to listen to. With a little bit more emotion and a little more, you know, freelance. Anyway guys, I thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.